It's January 1984. The media is obsessed with the bleeding book, won't shut up about it. And a month after the BBC screened its marvellous biopic with Ronald Pickup, as all well, Channel 4 in the UK is about to unleash another one. This is it, or an American commercial video of it. The Road to 1984, starring James Fox. The BBC TV movie, if you want to call it that, was about a specific three years of Orwell's life. This, on the other hand, was about the whole of his adult life. If that weren't ambitious enough, it also weaves in extracts from Orwell's two most famous novels, 1984 and Animal Farm. And not only that, but the actors in 1984 are uh, James Fox and some of his co-stars from the biopic. Don't believe them! Down with Big Brother! It doesn't exactly do it in chronological order either. In fact, it starts with his marriage in hospital to his second wife, Sonia, and then goes into flashback. Mr. George Orwell, the celebrated writer and journalist, was married today to Miss Sonia Brownell in a simple ceremony at University College Hospital. The film went out on Thursday the 19th of January 1984, two days before the 34th anniversary of Orwell's death. And I have to admit that before I wrote my book, I'd never heard of it. The first time I saw the film several years ago, my first reaction was that it was rather clunkily written, that they'd tried to cram so much stuff from Orwell's life into it that it was just info dumps all the way through. Also, Orwell looks about 40, even when he's in his 20s and 30s. Eric Arthur Blair. I thought it was a 1984 chap, George... Um... Orwell. Yes, it is. He writes under the name of Orwell. His real name is Eric Arthur Blair. Good. And wasn't there a previous marriage? Yes, his first wife died several years ago. So let's tick the boxes of Orwell's life story. He was an old Etonian who didn't go to university, but instead went off to Burma to become an imperial policeman. And while he was there, he saw a man being hanged and it sickened him and he became a lifelong opponent of capital punishment. When I saw the prisoner step aside to avoid the puddle, I saw the mystery, the unspeakable wrongs of cutting a life short in full tide. He also famously shot an elephant, which I think was probably beyond Granada TV's budget. Returning to the genteel town of Southwold in Suffolk, he shocks his parents by telling them he's going to follow his dreams and become a writer. I thought I might go away and write a book. You thought you might. It's not the way things are done. He becomes a kind of gonzo journalist, living among down and outs in Paris and the south of England in order to write about it. What do you want? Public schoolboy, what? <laughs> Don't meet many of the old school here. <laughs> in the Greater Manchester area, he researches his book about poverty, The Road to Wigan Pier. In Wigan, in the 1930s, the unemployed were so desperate for coal that they had to scrabble for it on the slag heaps. He marries his first wife, Eileen, who'll accompany him to Spain, where he'll be fighting in the trenches with the anarchist group, the Poom, against Franco's fascists. He flees Barcelona and Spain altogether, in fact, when the communist authorities order a purge of the anarchist forces. The communists are fighting with the Poom. It's politics. They're claiming that the Poom have secret affiliations with the fascists. Me? Affiliations with the fascists? The fascists shot me. Yes, Eric. It's errant bloody nonsense. Of course it is, but do try and keep your voice down. In London, he works unhappily as a World War II propagandist for BBC Radio. In fact, I'm sick to death of working for an organisation that's halfway between a girls' school and a lunatic asylum. I've got an appointment. With Eileen's encouragement, he starts writing Animal Farm as a satire of Stalinism. He could stand it no longer. They broke into the food store. The couple adopt a baby, Richard. 
Fred Warburg's taking Animal Farm. No! Oh, he's pleased too, aren't you, Richard? Eileen goes into hospital and dies on the operating table while he's reporting from a defeated and devastated Germany. Your wife was a wonderful person, Mr. Blair. Yes, I shall miss her. She was a good old stick. In his loneliness, he makes a play for Sonia Brownell, an assistant editor on Horizon magazine. I'm not sure, George, whether you're proposing to me or offering me a job as a secretary. He isolates himself on the Scottish island of Jura to write 1984. He then returns to London, where the book is a huge success, and dies in hospital suddenly one night from his tubercular illness, just as he's making plans to visit a Swiss sanitarium. The death occurred in London today of Mr George Orwell, the author, at the age of 46. The drama was the passion project of 33-year-old David Wheatley, who'd cut his teeth making arts documentaries for the BBC and, in fact, filmed The Arena Bottle. He tried writing it himself, but when that became too much, he sought the help of Willis Hall, who got the writer's credit for it. Uh, Julia Goodman, who played Sonia, told me that Wheatley went into enormous detail in the rehearsal process, making the actors research the history, the politics, everything. And this was James Fox's first major TV role in a decade, because in the 70s he joined an evangelical Christian group, the Navigators. Um, you, you became an agent uh, for a, a company selling phone <laughs> cleaning, yes. or, you, or you cleaned yeah. phones or something. Yeah. I mean, no wonder that your mother <laughs> thought you were a bit silly. Yes, quite. <laughs> I've been a little dismissive of the film in this video, which is perhaps unfair because some of the critics liked it very much. In my view, the Alan Plater BBC play that went out a month earlier is far superior. It's, it's an enduring work of art. But having said that, if you were a viewer in 1984 and you'd never read an Orwell biography, you just wanted a potted history of the man's life, this does what it says on the tin. It tells you what made him the man who wrote 1984. So thumbs up for that. In some ways, it's ahead of its time. There are live action animal farm sequences, for instance, which prefigure the 1999 hallmark animatronic TV movie, which I'll be coming to in a later video. Clover's eyes filled with tears. If she could have spoken her thoughts, it would have been to say that this was not what they aimed at when they had set themselves years ago to work for the overthrow of the human race. And although this is something that looks really tacky and exploitative now, and in fact was sprung on the actress Julia Goodman at the time, uh, Julia, the character in 1984, appears topless in it. This sort of sex was forbidden, of course, for party members, but Winston didn't care. He knew that they were already dead. Which is a weird segue into my next video, the Permissive Society version of 1984, starring John Hurt, Richard Burton and Susanna Hamilton. Thanks for watching. See you then. And I knew what this movie was all about from its first frame to its last frame. I, good actors, honorable film. So what? I, I think you're really missing the moon on it, Gene. I think that it's a good movie, and I feel that uh, the director, Michael Radford, has really done a great job of visualizing this material in an original way. Good performances. You like Richard Burton. I, I like John Hurt. No, I, I, that's too noble for me, but anyway, go ahead.